Okay, so firstly, thank you everybody for uh, attending what's going to be a fabulous uh, session. Uh, we have here with us today Dr. Haza uh, Alnimi, uh, the Coordinator General of the Dubai Government Excellence Programme. Uh, before, we, before I actually introduce uh, Dr. Haza, I wish to say from the New Zealand Business Excellence Foundation perspective that uh, we're all pleased to have you here. And if you are from uh, New Zealand, and you're not already a member of the New Zealand Business Excellence Foundation, uh, please do join us because we do have webinars on a frequent basis and we have some special events lined up next year, such as um, the Business Excellence Conference, which is being planned for the 10th and 11th of May next year. And that's combining that with the International Best Practice Competition. And that's where we can have organizations from around the world compete in that competition. Uh, through um, participating online and to participate in that competition there'll be webinars preceding that main event in, in May. Um, so with that I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Hazza. I've actually known Dr. Hazza for quite, quite a lot of years now um, and got to know him better and better as the years have progressed. <laughs> um, so we've known each other maybe for about 10 years. I think we met at a benchmarking conference about 10 years ago. And I think Dr. Hazard was then a project management, a project manager at the Dubai Government Excellence Program. And uh, he was considering doing a PhD at that time. And uh, I know eventually he did complete his PhD at Aston University in pro productivity and efficiency. And he also progressed to be the coordinator general for the Dubai Government Excellence Program. So the Dubai Government Access Programme is very special and he will introduce that to, to all of you. But I'd just like to say that worldwide there are 74 countries that promote business excellence, of which 57 countries uh, have a business excellence award. And I would say at this current point in time, you know, Dubai is the leader in terms of the amount of engagement they have from their clients, the government, in terms of excellence. So that they're doing an excellent, excellent job. They have excellent staff working with them. And you're going to hear a lot of great insights into that. Uh, so uh, Dr. Hazel will present for approximately 30, 40 minutes. And then after that, we'll have questions and answers. And so if you have any questions to share, then please add them to the chat box and uh, we'll ask them at the end of the presentation. So Dr. Hazel, are you ready to begin, please? Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> okay, excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Robin. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, it's an honor and it's a really absolute pleasure being here with you today. And uh, I would like to thank Dr. Robin for uh, the, his kind uh, invitation to participate in this webinar. I'm really excited uh, and happy being in such webinar with an audience who are experienced in the field of excellence and management, a field which is very close to my heart and very, um, you know, I'm very passionate about. Uh, I would love, you know, uh, I, I would have loved, you know, to be and to meet to be with you there and meet you in person. But given the current uh, situation, we are doing this uh, virtually and hoping that you all uh, keeping safe and healthy. So uh, before we start, I would like to, you know, to take this opportunity today to, to give you some details and insight about what the UAE and Dubai in specific has done in the past 23 years, uh, years since the establishment of Dubai Government Excellence Program in 1997. So the journey starts from here. So whoever, uh, you know, haven't been in Dubai yet, uh, as you can see this picture, which is not uh, very far from now, this picture was taken in the late 80s, specifically in 1987. It's about 30 years from now. And this is the same road now. Dubai, in a very short time frame, has really transformed into a global hub for trade, travel, and businesses, and has been one of the world's fastest growing cities over the past two decades. Dubai, where it stands today, it's uh, due to the wise and far sight vision for His Highness Sheikh Rashid Al Maktoum, the founder of Dubai, and his son, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the UAE Vice President, uh, Prime Minister, and the ruler of Dubai. Their effort really has positioned Dubai on the global map as a regional and uh, international leader. 
Before I uh, share with you about Dubai Government Excellence Program, let me take you through Dubai Excellence Map, where the journey started. The excellence journey started in 1994, where the government established Dubai Quality Award for really uh, you know, enhancing excellence for the private sector, which actually followed in 1997 with the establishment of Dubai Government Excellence Program, which I will really thoroughly talk about in the coming slides. These two initiatives could be considered as the cornerstone for the public and private sector development and improvement, and was really followed with establishment with the many initiatives and institutions, program. All these have contrib contributed to the development of Dubai and where it stands today. This is include, as you can see, Dubai uh, e-government back in 2000, the executive council uh, in, of, of Dubai government where the Dubai government excellence program belong and uh, Mohammed bin Rashid leadership program and followed by the launch of the first strategic plan for Dubai in 2017, which is called Dubai Plan 2015 and many other initiatives across the year, as you can see which is really started with the start, you know, in the past 25 years. So it comes as a surprise for everyone in the government when uh, our government leader, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid, directed to establish the excellence program in Dubai government to be the first excellence program in the region and one of the first excellence program in the world. DGEP mandated focuses on three main areas, as you can see, sets standard and incentivize excellence in government. And this is done through develop a, a regular update on the framework, uh, you know, uh, criteria, assessment methodology, and providing feedback report on the area of strength and improvement and best practices to the government ent entities around the world. The second is to act as global knowledge hub a global and innovation knowledge hub through facilitating knowledge sharing within Dubai and within our international partner and build a network of experts in government excellence. And accordingly, advise Dubai leadership on government excellence through developing and sharing finding and reports on government excellence in specific and government performance in general in Dubai. As mentioned, DGP is a pioneer excellence program aimed to enhance Dubai government excellence performance and services to a leading position uh, globally. Uh, it's a program that's very close to uh, our leader, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid, and he has highlighted the role and the impact of DGP in his uh, in, 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 of DGP in the transformation of government entities' performance and services in his book, My Vision. And uh, one of his quotes, he has actually quoted DGP in many of his, uh, many area in his book. One of his quotes, he said, this program is the force behind improvement of the public sector. It's propagate the spirit of competition not known by the government sector before. All managers, officials, and employees seek to compete to provide the best and win one of the awards. I believe that the main trigger of the government uh, for the government entities to embark on this initiatives of, of DGP or any other project in Dubai is the personal commitment actually of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid to this program and his belief that excellence is the main driver to enhance organizational performance, not only for the government sector, but any organization around the world. Not only did he launch and introduce a new concept for government performance and excellence, he actually personally follows that to the end. As you can see from this picture, this were taken recently during the pandemic, uh, which is show his commitment and support to any initiatives in Dubai. There are many examples uh, to int uh, introducing a new concept in the government sector by His Highness uh, one of which is the smart transformation where the government uh, government entities has to transform all their services into a digital services within two years time frame. So he didn't just launch the initiatives, he gave a deadline and follow up on that. 
on the 22nd May 2013, he announced, and on the, on the 22nd May 2015, he followed up, and you can see that on his Twitter account. If we talk about the deployment of DGP and how do we start with planning, governance, engaging with the stakeholder to ensure really successful implementation of our objective as DGP. As you can see, the deployment of Dubai Government Excellence Program is achieved through these key, uh, key stages. First, we set the aim and the objective for uh, government excellence performance as per the government priorities, which are decided according to our leadership direction and latest trend in excellence and innovation and what we have decided as an area of improvement uh, from the previous assessment cycle. So we build on our previous learning from the assessment cycle. One of the main contributor as well in setting the aim and objective is to take the government entities feedback into consideration. We always listen to the government and address their challenges. Based on that, we design and develop the awards model uh, categories and the criteria for each category. In addition to introduce new initiatives, program, project that will really enhance the public sector performance and build the human capital capabilities within the government entities. The next stage is that the program conduct several activities and spreading the awareness of the model and criteria and the way of adapt, adapting the, the best practices. At this stage, other activities targeting, you know, upskilling and enhancing the cap uh, capacity of the government employees in the, in the field of excellence and innovation, as well as the best practices implementation in the public sector. This includes really several training activities using different learning methodologies, including uh, electronic and smart learning. And we're going to talk about this methodologies, benchmarking, where we really cooperate with Dr. Robin as well. We're going to talk about this. And we are going to talk about these initiatives in, in the following slide. Then we measure the government performance, which is really a vital step, carried out, of course, through conducting our assessment cycle and also through conducting customer and employees happen studies in a yearly basis. The, then rewarding and really recognition or, or, or positive motivation, which is Dubai's way in stimulating government performance, where all government entities, employees, initiatives, and achievement are recognized through a prestigious award ceremony is conducted under the patronage of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. And finally, we have to learn from our experience and also share the knowledge with the government entities from this really full cycle. There are certain expectations from our leaders in Dubai toward the government entities. The vision of, of our leader is, is very ambitious, ambitious, but uh, uh, very simple at the first time. They want Dubai and the UAE to be number one in all fields. So the expectation from the program from DGP is very high as well. It's to achieve, you know, and it's, it's achieving the program vision, which is enhance the performance of government entities to become global leader in their field of work. So we want Dubai police, for example, to be the best police force in the world. We want Dubai municipality to be the best municipality in the world and so on. The ultimate goal, of course, is to improve the happiness of the people and the society in Dubai and the UAE. So our model is actually built on achieving best practices and to be a global leader. The government entities leader, the director general as well, would expect us to include and update relevant best practices, criteria in our excellence model. They expect to benefit from our learning initiatives through implementation of global best practices in their entities. And of course, to have a rigorous government, govern, uh, governance system that ensure awarding and recognizing the outstanding performance in the government entity. There are expectation and there are also challenges encounter working you know, with, with the government entities. In order to keep our business models really relevant in today's world and identify the challenges really faced by the government department, recently, DGEP has gone through a significant review 
last year in, uh, and in, in uh, October last year, which what we called actually DGB 2.2, 2.0. First of all, we had to make sure that our model is aligned with the best practices. So what we did exactly, we looked to all other models in the world and catering to all our stakeholders through multiple channels. The first thing we did was to engage our stakeholder and conducting interview with them. Some of the question we really inquire and ask them, what do you think of the existing model? So we asked the, the government entities, what are the current gaps and what things that you need to improve? What things need to be changed? What are the pain points that they have experienced within the full process of the assessment? and the full process of the past years. This being followed by identifying all the gaps and common challenges faced by the government entities. Then we looked worldwide at the other business excellence model. We did a benchmark with, uh, with best practices and we, uh, we did this through our membership within the Global Excellence Council and the partnership with the International Award. As you know, DGP is a member of Global Excellence Model Council. Plus, we kept track with the, uh, our leadership new direction and initiatives to achieve Dubai vision. Then we end up having too many uh, dots. We have analyzed them, start to connecting these dots together to what really going to fulfill the customer need and expectation, which is our government entities and, and the, all stakeholders. So we saw too many challenges, as you can see. So we, we, we heard from the government that, you know, the program is, is becoming, uh, I'll, I'll just, you know, read a few of them, is becoming very predictable, the process easy. So we changed it to dynamic assessment. And you're going to see how is that happening. The framework that focus on the process, now the framework mainly focusing on what's matter and focusing on the result. Entities really, uh, you know, fatigue and they feel really, you know, uh, being, being ha heavily involved by the process. Now the entities are really motivated in Dubai. Large number of awards, and now we really minimize the number of awards to, uh, to, to only outstanding performance. Improved effort are not recognized. And now entities on the path to excellence, you know, uh, any improvement in the, government, in the government entities is really acknowledged. So the outcome of this exercise was coming up with seven principles that form the, fo the foundation of DGP 2.0, which are, as you can see, these are the seven different initiatives that we came up with last year. First of all is the elite model. After 20 years of, assess of, assessing, uh, of the assessment of government entities, the government entities become very much aware of the assessment criteria and requirement so this pillar of the assessment will really add the element of unpredictability. The result-based assessment as well. This way, the assessment framework set clear objective and KPIs requirement set for, uh, for, the, for the entity who score above 450. And we're going to talk about this, how we have a league now of, of uh, assessment. Leaderboard, this will uh, add clarity and, and uh, visibility to all entities on how they compare to other participants. So each government entity will have a dashboard having every single score and how did they score on each criteria and they're gonna compare themselves with other entities. Uh, feedback, entities uh, clearly see their achievement and progress toward their targets for, from the feedback. Pioneering partnership, this initiative, is, we, we're gonna conduct this initiative uh, after our assessment cycle next year which is really collective responsibility of top performer will match with the bottom performers, uh, performers for knowledge sharing and uh, the treasure hand, which is limiting the number of hours. We're gonna talk a little bit about the league of competition, which is very interesting now in, in Dubai. And, and I think we've been pioneering in this. Uh, the league of competition, the spectrum of progression and uh, three leagues of competition to motivate government entities to improve, we have, categorized our participant entities into three levels, similar to the football leagues, which makes it, which really makes it very interesting and dynamic for the government entities to improve and to move into upper level. So starting from the foundation level, as you can see, 
for the entities who score below 400, 450 points in the previous assessment cycle out of 1,000. And we have 15 entities in this level competing to qualify. So their target is to qualify to the next level, which is the excellence level. There is no award in this level. Their target is to move into the excellence level. They will get nothing except if they qualify, they will, they will get a certification of excellence. On the next level, which is the excellence level for the entities who score between the 450 to 600. And we have 13 entities in this level in Dubai competing for seven different awards categories. So here, government entities can compete on the award and receive as well if they stay in this league certification on excellence. On the highest level, which is the elite level for the entities who score above 600 in the last assessment cycle, and we have four entities in this level competing only for the elite award. On this league competition, this league competition was developed as a result of, of challenge we saw where some entities dominating most of the awards uh, categories and other were left out with no chance of really reaching to the winners and getting uh, and being rewarded and basically demotivating at the end of the day. So after 23 years or 20 over 20 years of assessment, we found that some entities have really been dominating all the awards. So this league will give a chance for some entities to win some of the awards and to qualify into the next level. So our main aim and objectives that to move all entity to be elite. This is the main objective in Dubai. So in this way, you see that all the entity is motivated, has its own targets, and uh, is awarded according to the current level of performance of these government entities. Elite model, after again, after 20 years of assessment, the entity is really becoming very aware, as, as I just mentioned, of the criteria. But this pillar and you know, will add uh, you know, uh, really unpredictability factor for the, uh, for the government entities and for this elite entities. And these factors, so for example, this year, we add three different uh, pillars, agility, data science and AI, and partnership. And this is gonna change in every assessment cycle for these entities based on, on what's happening around the world, based on the latest technology, based on the latest trend, we're gonna decide on these changeable uh, and, and unpredictable uh, pillars. I talk about the dashboard, which is an interactive dashboard, as you can see, but the entity will see their score and the previous score, and they, they will see the other entity score, but without seeing the name of the other entities, which really will help the entities to improve and compare themselves with these different entities. Again, uh, pioneering partnership, which represent a mechanism for cooperation, a partnership between entities to improve their performance by uh, transferring the you know, uh, expertise and knowledge through self-assessment, knowledge sharing, and uh, maybe temporary uh, secondment between the government entity. And as you can see, the elite level entities cooperate with the excellence level entities and the excellence level entities cooperating gonna, gonna cooperate and work with the foundation level entities to pull them up and to move uh, you know to move them up in the, in the in the league and this cooperation and integration will be assessed as well in the following assessment cycle so what really makes dgp special and relevant so what are some unique features that really uh, you know, differentiate DGP and, and what is really the value proposition put forward. I think every award management program has to look for its uniqueness in delivering its value added to its stakeholders. From my experience in DGP and uh, looking at the other excellence program in the world, I see that what differentiate really uh, Dubai government excellence program from other awards and make it really successful these main key uniqueness, let's say. First of all, trust. Through its really DGP, through its rigorous governance system and quality assurance during the assessment process and through the support and close monitoring of His Highness. So our leader is always involved, is always there. We have gained the trust of government entities. 
they trust that we are going to put only the outstanding performance on the stage to be recognized. The second thing we really, we've been, you know, as, as I just mentioned, the seven different projects, we always update our, uh, you know, model and our criteria and our, our project and program, the categories, criteria, all initiatives, always been updated and in, in, in incorporated with the latest uh, trend uh, in organization and excellence and to address local and global challenges facing by the, faced by the government entities. So every year we conduct this review. Integrated, our program really is an integrated program. So when we talk about integration, as you can see in our model, all type of performance, excellence, organizational, employees, initiatives, all other types are really integrated. The program is also integrated in terms of deliverables, uh, in terms of uh, criteria, categories, training, and really knowledge sharing activities, all integrated to serve one goal, to enhance the government performance to be global leading, uh, to be in a global leading level. Even in our, like for example, uh, hap happiness studies is integrated. We have an innovation framework that we measure the government performance innovation level. Uh, it's, all, it's all integrated within this uh, framework. We have our central government as well. They feed their KBIs. They feed into this, you know, it's it considered as a main input in our model. Global reput reputation, DGP is globally recognized to be one of the leading programs in the world. As you already might know, we are a member of a Global Excellence Model Council, which uh, indicate other uh, international award uh, from Malcolm Baldridge Award, the IFQM Award, and other prestigious awards uh, in the world. Impactful, uh, it, it has been a significant uh, impact. You know, DGB has really has been a significant and had put a significant impact on the performance of government entities. And we're gonna talk about this in a minute. We recently conduct an impact assessment. To study, uh, to study the impact of DGP, supported by PCG, uh, Boston Consulting Group, which has, you know, which was based on the mission that DGP was established, which is to incentivize Dubai government entity to achieve these four main objectives: is happiness and welfare of of citizen, uh, government efficiency and effectiveness, innovation and international competitiveness. So we've been assessed based on this four different factor. So first of all, we get the feedback. It's actually conducted as mentioned by PCG and uh, it's by third party. We have, we have no interference in this assessment. And the feedback we, we receive from the government entities, uh, you know, saying that uh, DGP is one of the most pre prestigious award. DGP gave us a framework for improvement. It put us under pressure to deliver. DGP provided incentives to improve our services and our performance. Also, the government entities indicate that 70% say that DGP was impactful in improving their effectiveness in the past years. And this is also reflected in the result of the customer happiness. Our impact is reflected in the customer happiness. Uh, we're going to show you in a minute as well from 2004 or 2005 to 2018 or 19. It's a huge improvement, almost 50% improvement. Dubai is, is also considered among top 20 innov innovative uh, cities. And uh, according to the government entities, this can be attributed to, to Dubai government innovation framework. We have a framework of innovation. And some of the comments mentioned by the government entities that DGP taught us to uh, innovation for problem solving. DGP program helped us focus on future com uh, community innovation. We benefited from DGP. Dubai Innovation Initiative. So we have a lot of innovation activities as well within DGP that really supported the government entities. Again, uh, DGP uh, act as a, a driver uh, of impact and influence in the UAE of all excellence award. We are the first government award, let's say in the region and the UAE, followed by all these awards from 2004, 2006 and 2008, different uh, award in the UAE being followed and being affected and impacted by DGP. In the region, 
uh, DGB has a great influence in the, in the King Abdullah the second uh, center of excellence in Bahrain center of excellence in 2006 and uh, King Abdullah uh, quality award and then Saudi Arabia so these entity they're all actually learned from DGP they impacted by DGP and uh, we have a, we have we have a cooperation between us and these award uh, you know uh, locally and uh, regionally Again, if we look at our assessment since we start uh, assessing government entities uh, 2004, the highest entity scored 590. In the last assessment cycle, the highest uh, entity scored 641, which is a huge improvement. Uh, again, the customer happiness started at 69 and now 85.2, which is actually 2019. Uh, employees happiness index in 2019 uh, started uh, uh, started in 2005-68 uh, and now 85 in 2019 as well. DGB also invested in people within the government entities and in building capabilities. Over 40,000 employees benefited from DGP uh, seminars, which is around now maybe uh, 200 seminars actually, and webinars and uh, you know different type of, of uh, knowledge sharing. Over 15,000 employees really benefited from a formal training. We talk about excellence and innovation training that we conduct to certify uh, and uh, to upskill uh, employee within the government. And over 20,000 employees are registered in our smart training uh, initiatives. We have a Dubai smart training initiatives where we train all the government entities in this, in this application. And actually, this application has won in 2016 as one of the as as one of the best five knowledge sharing uh, initiatives or platform. Again, we'll talk about uh, DGP and the COVID-19 pandemic. Dubai, as other cities uh, and countries in the world, uh, was shocked uh, of the spread of the virus. In Dubai, Alhamdulillah, the public uh, surface response uh, was very response was very fast and efficient. Uh, what has helped us in the Pre uh, existent of infrastructure of digital services, which were really mature and uh, accessible and utilized by the public. So basically, there was no major shock in the system. The business continued to operate as usual. Also, government uh, employees worked 100% remotely, which showed that the resilience and the agility of the government uh, in the face, uh, you know, on, on, the, on, on how we face the crisis. The government uh, was uh, prepared based on the investment and excellence, innovation and digital transformation previously. DGP has conducted as well. So if we talk about DGP recently and within the pandemic and within the lockdown actually, DGP has conducted an exciting and I think very beneficial project during the crisis which was held under one of our benchmarking initiatives, which we call Dubai Wulan initiatives. We're gonna talk about it. This initiative is actually we conducted in, in, a, in a collaboration with uh, Dr. Uh, Robin Mann. During this crisis, we have initiated the project aiming at learning from the world best practices in managing uh, and recovering from COVID-19 crisis using internationally recognized methodology and tool. The project was conducted and uh, finalized in a duration of six weeks. And it was during the crisis and during the lockdown, while everyone in Dubai working remotely. The project uh, involve, uh, involved identifying the best practices in managing COVID-19 in five different pillars, mainly crisis management, public health, uh, economic recovery, food security, and supply chain, and finally, social behavior pillars. So we have, you know, we, we benchmark and we look internationally on these different five pillars. 28 government entity uh, officials were involved in this project, representing uh, different uh, 11 government entities. The project resulted really in identifying more than 200 practice from 50 countries around the world, as you can see. This, this initiative is based on trade methodology, as you might uh, all know, this trade methodology which, you know, we do this learning initiatives in cooperation with the Center for Organization Excellence and Research in New Zealand with Dr. Man Robin. Uh, and uh, there are some picture, uh, these are some picture of, of the last assessment uh, cycle we conduct. 
we have already uh, as well issued uh, two books of the project participated in this initiatives and we are currently working in on issuing the third book for the last assessment cycle and you can uh, look at these books uh, in, in the DGP uh, website. You can look at this book and you, look, you can look as well on the uh, DGP effort in, the, in, the 2000, in 2020 during the pandemic. Um, last but not least, uh, I would like, uh, you know, uh, here to say some words to both an excellence award and an organization in general. For the excellence award, I would like to ask them to, to learn and uh, benefit from uh, our success factor. And that is, you know, building trust in the program and seek the highest and the higher leadership support and commitment to the program. Show uh, relevance by continuous updating, continuously updating the, you know, the criteria, uh, including the global best practices and to address both global and most important local challenges, knowledge sharing of success stories and adapting the best practices, followed up on the winners as well and ensure the sustainability of, of their success and excellence performance. And finally measure your success and your impact and improve in, in a continuous basis. Word to the organization, uh, as for the organization, I would like to uh, advise to focus on their customers, study their expectation and continuous improvement and ensure their, uh, you know, uh, their experience are, are improved and, and their expectation are met. Innovation is always a great way to differentiate your organization and achieve leadership position, build innovation culture through uh, your organization Innovation is not an uh, initiative or a certain function or, or something belong to the R&D. It's everyone's job in the organization. Finally, I would like to advise any organization to leverage on the technology as well. Uh, utilizing the technology feature wisely and increasing the efficiency and effectiveness of your organization. Harness the power of, of technology and the innovation and in shaping the future of your organization and your country. Thank you very much for your uh, for hosting me and uh, thank you for your time and I'm happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much indeed, uh, uh, Dr. Hazard. Um, before I go to the chat room to look at what questions we have for you, then um, I'd like to say firstly, <laughs> thank you so much for your sharing. I think that was extremely insightful and gave a great overview of the journey you've been on in, in, in Dubai and uh, the support that the Dubai Government Excellence Programme has provided to all your government uh, um, entities. Um, and, you know, I would really like to ask the, the, the first question to you. And because of this fantastic journey you've been on and with, with great success, you mean you, you, you shared some of the impact that your programme has had in terms of moving the government forward, in terms of um, improving citizen satisfaction, in terms of um, employee satisfaction. Um, I know as well, if, you know, in terms of innovation, the UAE has improved in terms of international competitiveness, in terms of ease of doing business, all these measures, there's been dramatic improvements. Uh, but many of us are asking the question, can we have a Dubai Government Excellence Programme in our own countries? Because, <laughs> you know, and, and we're often trying to encourage our own governments to go along a similar path to, to Dubai. So have you got any advice or sort of anything you'd recommend of how we can follow a similar journey, what we need to do to get started? How can this happen? Thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Robin. It's a very, very important question. Is actually, as, as I mentioned at the end, you know, the, one of the most important things to really make sure that uh, your program is very successful and uh, your uh, uh, workforce are very uh, incentivized and uh, the organizational are improved is the leadership involvement. The highest leadership is always involved within the last 23 years since the establishment of the GP. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid, UAE Vice President, the Prime Minister and the ruler of Dubai, he's always there. In every award, he's the he's the one who's awarding the the you know the, the winners. 
He's uh, he's always involved in every initiative, in every uh, uh, forum, in every exhibition we do. So he's, he's always there. So seeking the highest leadership support is one of the main, uh, you know, uh, success factor. The second, I would I would say, is really to to go down and listen to the government entities, and this is what we did. You know, we went and we we we. we you know, we we looked at the at the you know at the you know we we assess our impact and we assess our performance as DGP and we listen to the government entities. So and we reflect that in our criteria and in our initiatives. So we always we always in contact with the government entities to see what their you know what their main challenges. So yeah. if you as an award, you don't listen to to your stakeholders, you won't reach anywhere. So they will struggle. We saw a main challenge, for example, that entities never moved since 10, 15 years. They scored the same score. So we changed the concept, we changed the culture, we changed the mindset by setting the leagues. So everybody now, you know, is, is really awarded to move upwards, to move forwards. We saw that domination of, of awards. So we really give these guys, the, the elite guys, a highest level in the, in the in the city so you know to be to be elite and everybody should follow and we give chance for other entities to win some of the awards and maybe move upwards so we always have to listen to our customers we always have to really analyze their their you know their challenges and we we have to connect the dots sometimes it's not easy you know so we didn't come this come up with this seven initiatives you know we really learn from you guys. We learn from you, Dr. Robin, to be honest. We learn from Australian uh, award. We learn from international award. Even, you know, slight information will really help you to improve. So, so, so do you have pressure in terms of, from the government as well, in terms of defending your budget and, and the support and, and the actual program itself? So you've got to provide the argument of, of why you need to continue? Can you repeat that? So do you have also, I mean, you, you, you're talking about obviously having to be always responsive and understand the needs of your customers, which are the government entities, and to make the programme fresh. So do you always need to defend the budget that the Dubai Government Excellence programme gets from the government and the support of the overall programme? Because again, very, that's an issue for many countries. Very, very interesting question. I know some of the... Uh, of the awards are actually, you know, uh, they have the, they are self funded, and some of the awards are really budgeted from the government. But our budget uh, actually is is uh, is clearly defined and is clearly is clearly can be, uh, you know, uh, our impact from our impact. We don't really uh, define our budget, but we ask and they, and uh, and we get our budget based on our achievement. So. Uh, and again, and, and I would like to mention as well, we have the, for example, Dubai uh, Finance Department, DOF, is, is with us participating. So we have the central government, they know exactly what's happening. So we are measuring even the financial aspect for the government entities. We are measuring the digital aspect, the innovation aspect, and you know all these input, inputs are feeding into our models. Okay. Thank you. Well, what I'll do, because George has got his hand up and his video is showing, we'll let, we'll let George have the first question, George Roman, and then after that, we'll go through the list in the, in the chat box and we'll try to cover as many as possible. Thank you, Dr. Robin. Can you hear me well? Yes. Thank you, Dr. Azza. Uh, you did amazing. Uh, and a big fan seems, and I was living in Chile three years ago about the DEP and all the work for the last 23 years. It's very impressive, the progress, the impact of a city like Dubai, with, especially with the public sector. Uh, as, as you mentioned, Dr. Robinman, uh, the benchmarking cycle Dubai will learn is, a, is an amazing initiative. It should be explored and, and used in other countries. Uh, what are your plans, your, your future plans related with sharing this to other governments like, I don't know, I'm thinking New Zealand, Canada, Chile, all over the region, GCC, because it's, a, it's an amazing way to all together learn something, share the knowledge, and get better performance. So I just would like to know what are your plans for the future 
related with this, uh, Dr. Hassan. Thank you. Thank you very much again. Uh, shakran and greetings from Dubai Police. Big fan. Thank you, George. Dr. Robin, you want to say something about this? Not really, but I think the, the question relates, to be honest, to the whole Dubai Government Excellence Program, because this is what other countries want to learn from, and you've got a great um, chance to be an ambassador for excellence worldwide. Um, you know, I still uh, think many countries are not aware of the work that's been being, being undertaken in this area. I totally agree with you. And uh, going back to George's point, it's, uh, Dubai We Learn is a very successful initiative, actually. And uh, we even utilize it for the pandemic and we use these tools, not, not the full tools, but I mean, we've been able to engage everybody in the government to really and truly get together and use this successful tool. Uh, you know, we save uh, millions of, of dirhams, uh, tens of millions of dirhams based on these initiatives. Uh, lots of projects are now, as you know, we're working next year and in, into an integration project as well. So not only uh, just a project by the government entity, now we'll try to, to get all the entities working together on some certain project to collaborate and to integrate as one government. Um, regarding other uh, learning from, uh, you know, as, as George mentioned, maybe within Dubai, within the UAE and, with, you know, and regionally, you know, we, we try our best to, to promote our initiatives, but again, it only depends on the, you know, on 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 the, these government and on these countries how they want to progress and learn. Uh, you know, in, in the past 23 years, there's a lots of uh, cities and countries learn from our experience, and we as well learn from them. So it's a two-way actually learning, and we're here to help anybody and to support anybody and uh, really, you know, share with them our success stories. Okay, well, we'll go through the questions in the chat box now. So. Firstly, there's a general question. Are there any countries which, which uh, Dubai lo looks up to in terms of learning best practices and benchmarking, maybe particularly in the excellence area? Uh, very, very, very good question. And uh, of course, you know, we always learn from the best and we always, uh, you know, uh, we have a similar experience to different countries. So for example, we learn a lot from Singapore as, as a city, for example, uh, again, as an award, now we, we are part of, of the Global Excellence Council. And this Global Excellence, Excellence Council is our reference for any learning. So any countries within the Global Excellence Council, any model actually from India, China, Japan, Singapore, Australia, uh, I think Brazil or Mexico, uh, US and Europe, we learn, we try to learn from everybody. But if we talk about specific country, uh, um, I, I, you know, it's, every region has his own uh, uh, specification. But again, when it comes to the award, the best uh, gift we've been in is the uh, Government Excellence uh, Council. I mean, Global Excellence Council. Okay, thank you. We have a question from New Zealand, from, from Karu. Uh, have the uniform government departments, therefore have the military, the, the police emergency services, have they been part of the Dubai Government Excellence Program as the other good government departments? Because often these departments are very difficult to, or slow to change. A very interesting question. If, uh, you know, um, uh, we, we, I don't know if, if, if people who's listening to us know the structure of, of uh, federation in UAE. We have a federal government and we have a local government. You know, basically, if we talk about Dubai and Abu Dhabi and other cities, we have as well a local uh, government. So if we talk about local government, government in Dubai, Dubai police is part of our local government and has some relation with the federal federal government as well. But they're participating with us and they're participating as well with the uh, federal government. Uh, definitely Dubai police is, is, uh, with the, is particip participating with DGP from the start actually. And it's been one of the really leading entities within, within the region and within the world. You know, uh, Dubai police is an exceptional entities and uh, it has a lot of success stories. People in, uh, in, the, in the world, usually they, they get really uh, scared from the police here. People are very relaxed with the police. The police has, has his own way of, of really, uh, you know, uh, we have a very high percentage. We, cons we, cons we consider one of the best three, I think, you know, uh, people feel safe in the road. Uh, so this is all referred because of the uh, Dubai police when we talk about the uh, Dubai government and Dubai city. Thank so, you. but military is not with us, just, just to highlight as well. The military, they, they, they have their own award. They are not part of any award uh, within the 
But, but as you say, it's it's used at the federal level across all ministries and across all at the, the local level in, in the in the particular particular Emirates of, of Dubai. Um, what about the role of women leadership in the Dubai government? Can you talk about that, Dr. Hada? Has a the role women, of women in 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 the leadership? Oh, in government. Very interesting. Uh, the woman actually represents the maturity in Dubai government. I can't say I, I I don't know the exact percentage, but definitely more than the the, the female is more than the male within the government entities. I think is maybe sixty five or seventy percent are female and and uh, maybe the remaining is is male uh, we have a huge role of of the of the woman in the leadership uh, either in the executive council or within the other uh, department uh, uh, if we talk about the program well, we have a lot of honor actually from the women and we have a, a, we used to have a category it's called the best female in the government so uh, they have a great role. Uh, we have a council for uh, human for uh, women as well. So it, uh, it's it's been very successful within uh, the Dubai. Okay. Uh, with regards to the award itself, you know, what incentives do you give for organisations to, to to progress in terms of excellence? So, is there anything in in addition to the award, the recognition that that is given to the government entities? Very, very interesting question. You know, the main incentive is His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid uh, supporting and uh, giving the award to, to the winners. This is the main incentives. Uh, the award itself, uh, we don't have uh, really a monetary award like money award only for the, for the uh, individual. Let's say for employees, we have a specific, uh, uh, you know, uh, let's say uh, uh, financial award, but for the organization mainly it's the, the award itself, the prestigious, the prestige Ina. award. Of, Ina. Uh, and, um, you Exhaust know, on Corona. Can you mute, Almas, can you mute your microphone or I'll mute it for you? <laughs> okay, so yeah, so this is the, you know, the main incentives for the government entities. And, you know, all our uh, report and feedback are presented to our leadership. So this is really give a high uh, pressure on the government as well. Okay, for the success of the Dubai Government Excellence Programme, what are the key relationships that are, are necessary? I mean, presumably with the leadership, are there any relationships you require with the private sector, for, for example? Definitely, very good question. Uh, you know, the private sector is the main partner of the government and recently, when we talk about the elite, if you, if you saw when I talk about the elite model, uh, we talk, you know, we add the partnership pillars, PPP. So how the government can really uh, benefit and uh, work uh, together with, uh, with the private sector. The private sector is one of the main stakeholders of the government and they're always work together. And it's considered within our framework, within our criteria, within our assessment. And we actually ask the government to always conduct a survey of the of their stakeholder of their partnership of their uh, you know private sector partnership as well. Okay, this is another sort of question. I guess looking at the emphasis of the Dubai Government Excellence Program criteria itself. I mean, what what is the focus on sustainability and environmental issues as part of the Dubai Government Excellence Program? Uh, the whole model is actually focused on sustainability. So if you look at the and our assessment methodologies and uh, tools is actually one of the main criteria of the assessment tools is sustainability and how government can sustain their results and their achievement. This is one of the one of the main things actually. So one of the main assessment tools is the sustainability and achieving leading positions. But as well, when we talk about the criteria, we have uh, you know the, the the sustainability, the environmental sustainability. We have uh, the you know the green area within Dubai. We have a lots of sustainability criteria within our model. Okay, I think that we have two final questions which are related because we're coming to the end anyway. We've got them in the last five minutes. Um, obviously, you've talked about the changes to the Dubai Government Excellence Program in the last couple of years. Um, I mean. How has that been received by your stakeholders? Are they happy with the changes? What's the feedback so far? Um, and 
and how often is this cycle going? You, you, you review you review your program once once every year, every two years. So can you just? Yes, thank you, Dr. Roman. It's very very interesting question. Um, I can't say to be honest, uh, but we had a lots of positive feedback from the government entities. The changes really touches their their needs, touches their expectation. Really, we try to trigger the, the challenges that they face. They, they're, they're very happy. They're very satisfied. Uh, I met one of the coordinator general, uh, uh, co co director general within the government entity, and he said for the first time, if I don't win any award, I'm happy for the progress that you guys made within the government. So to this level, you know, these guys, they used to fight for the awards. Now they are satisfied with the changes, with the improvement, with the support that the program providing to, you know, the dynamic that, that we do to the government entities. So the, the government are very satisfied, especially when we focus on the core business of the entity. So we're talking about their core businesses. So they would love to talk about it because it's, it's, it's their language, you know? We talk their language by brought, bringing the SMEs from, from all over the world. With regards to the second part of your question, Dr. Robin, which is uh, how often, to be honest, we always, try to, uh, to to improve our model. And during that, you know, so for, I give you a, a small example for, you know, during the pandemic now, uh, our assessment cycle, you know, should be conducted in Feb or March, 2020. But uh, because of the pandemic, we had to postpone the, the assessment to 2021. And we come up with a new assessment model for 2020. And we are the first award who did that. We consider 2020 as a challenge for the government entities and as an opportunity for us as well to look at this challenge and at the same time to incentivize the government to work beyond and to plan for post COVID-19. So we create this model that focus on the business continuity, focus on the leadership support, focus on the how did the government entities really reskill and upskill their, uh, their uh, you know, workforce. We focus on different area and we focus on two main things, the pandemic time and the post-pandemic planning time. So it was really interesting. And, you know, we, we've been very dynamic and, you know, we've been proactive in coming up with new things. But if we talk about, you know, we usually do it every year. So after the assessment cycle, we gather all the feedback and we try to review and improve every, every assessment cycle, post every assessment cycle. Let's see. Thank you. I mean, as you were saying about, uh... In, in the past, the actual awards process was very, very competitive. And now you have a different uh, approach where you have this league system. Um, and, you know, in, in terms of the, the league system, can, can you be relegated from being an elite organization? What's, what's, what happens now? Absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it's a football league. Uh, you know, and, uh, you, you know, I support Arsenal. I don't know people from UK now, my team, you know, it's, it's near the relegation going down. Mm -hmm. So, it's, you know, you know, it doesn't matter how good you are, how your history are. But again, if you're not performing well, you're going to go down. So mm -hmm. it's always, the, this is what really keep the entities to on their toes to go and do the best. So the entities who score less than 600, mm -hmm. the following assessment cycle, they're going to be relegated to the to the excellence league mm -hmm. and the same for excellent league gonna be relegated to the foundation league. So this is what what's what we really uh, think it's it's motivated motivated for the government. But but the uh, the issue that I saw in in the Dubai government was in the past they were so competitive against each other, weren't they? It's which could have gone against sharing between government entities in the past to some degree. And so I hope Absolutely. the changes that will will address that. You know. Yeah, we address that in, in different ways. One of the things is the league. And the most important thing, and I mentioned that, is the partnership uh, initiatives, you know, uh, leading for partnership, where the government entities, the, the elite entities will work with the uh, excellence entities, and the excellence entity will work with the uh, foundation entities. This is going to happen just after the assessment cycle. They're going to work for two years. And they're going to be assessed on how they collaborate and how much the low performance uh, entities improve and how much the elite and excellence entity really support. So we will measure the both way in the following assessment cycle. And this 
will really help the entities to not be very competitive, but share the knowledge more than ever. Okay. I think we're going to have to leave it there, Dr. Hazard. We could talk all night as it is in New Zealand at the moment. It's uh, just past uh, seven o'clock in, in New Zealand. So I really appreciate uh, your passion and the amount of sharing. It's been tremendously insightful. We all wish we'd got our own governments following a similar path to Dubai. So uh, hopefully as a result of this, you'll get invitations to travel all around the world and uh, come to New Zealand as soon as we That's open up our borders. It's, so it's really thank you very much indeed and uh, happy Christmas to everybody who's participating today. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you and it's our pleasure and happy Christmas to everyone. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And we'll share the video after the video will be made available to everybody as well. Okay. Thank, thank you, you, Dr. Robin. Thank, thank you. you. Nice to see you. Thank you, Hazel. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.